Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at another Mocha network extension kit from Action Tech. This is their WCB6200Q, and I do suggest you check out the review I did of this device here about two weeks ago because they are companions to one another in a sense. And uh, what Mocha lets you do in a nutshell is uh, take your internet from your router and put it out over your cable television wiring so that you can uh, get your network working in rooms far away from where your router is located at better speed. So if you're Wi-Fi is dropping off in a certain room. Uh, you can take one of these things and hook it up remotely out there using your cable TV wires. It doesn't interrupt your TV service, yet you get essentially gigabit Ethernet speeds over these coaxial cables to get your network extended. And what this larger device does, in addition to having all the guts of this thing, uh, is it also has a wireless access point built into it. So what you can do is locate this on the other end of your house, and then you have wireless out in those far reaches of your home, and your devices can kind of roam between your router's Wi-Fi uh, and this one. So a really great and reliable way uh, to get your network extended, especially if you've been frustrated trying to get uh, internet connections out to uh, the kids' bedrooms or other parts of the house that aren't uh, so accessible. And this works better than anything you can buy. It works better than power line adapters, better than Wi-Fi repeaters. Uh, you plug it in and uh, nine times out of 10, at least in my experience, they work and work exceptionally well. And this new uh, 2.0 standard that these both run on uh, is exceptionally fast as well. So you get really true gigabit speed as we found in the review we did a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to be taking a closer look at this device today. Definitely, again, check out the review of this one to get a better sense of it. We will build out a little network here on the table to get a better feel for how all of this works. So you can get a good understanding of uh, what a Mocha network looks like. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Action Tech. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So what I want to do first here is just go over the hardware on this. So think of this as all the guts of this thing in addition to having a wireless access point built in. And what's nice about this is that it's got really super fast Wi-Fi. So it has the latest wireless AC built in, a 4x4 5 gigahertz radio, which is actually more than any computer I have in the house can access. So uh, what we're going to be doing is testing it with a uh, MacBook, which has a 2x2 two two radio. So there's a lot of uh, extra bandwidth for the future here for your wireless network as uh, computers catch up with what's available on the access points. I have a whole video on wireless AC. There the access points always run a couple of generations ahead of what your computer might have on board to use with it, but it will be fast for most modern computers because uh, it does support uh, the 2x2 two two AC wireless as well. There's also a legacy radio on here too, a 2.4 gigahertz wireless N radio. So this is really a full-fledged uh, uh, wireless access point that works exceptionally well. You also have two Ethernet jacks on here versus one on this one. So you can have this set up in a room, uh, plug in a computer in an Xbox or something hardwired, and then still get gain the benefit of having the wireless access point built into, us, into this as well. Uh, you have your coax adapter here. This is where your cable television wire goes into. Uh, you'll note that on this one, they kind of have a splitter built in, so you can plug your TV into this one while the network is on this one. Uh, this doesn't have that, but it comes with a Mocha compatible splitter. So everything you need in the box uh, should get you uh, up and running with it. And then, of course, you've got your uh, power adapter that goes in there, and then a reset button if things ever go wrong with it. So what I'm going to do now is boot this up. Uh, we're going to see how it performs wireless and then I'll talk about a couple of security issues that you should be aware of and, and how you can mitigate those. Let's get started. Now, it's important to point out that this does not work by itself. You need another Mocha device on your network for it to talk to. In this case, we're using another bonded 2.0 adapter from Action Tech. This will work with older versions of Mocha. This technology has been around for a while. Uh, this is the newest one, though, and also the fastest. So I would recommend if you have an older Mocha device, uh, pick up one of these also. So the wireless component here by itself is $120. Uh, this is about $80. $82. So a little over 200 bucks and you've got yourself uh, your network ready to go with no additional wiring necessary if you have the cable TV wires already in those rooms. So probably cheaper uh, than wiring up Ethernet if you have to and very easy to set up here. So what we're going to do is just apply power to this one and then uh, plug in our cable wire here and I'll explain how this network is working. So the way this thing is set up is that uh, this Mocha device is plugged into my router via Ethernet. Uh, this wire here is our cable television wire and then that will run around your home uh, to the other device. So all the data is transiting uh, via this coax cable using the same wiring as your cable television 
from here to there and back again. And then uh, when the data arrives at this box, it pushes it out over ethernet to your router. So it's really what they call a bridge. Now we're setting this up here on my desk, a very short cable, but uh, what I found in my testing on these adapters that we looked at two weeks ago is that there is very little noticeable performance decline as you get further away from where this is located. All right, so everything is connected and up and running. You'll see that we have a green light here by our little network indicator. This means that the Mocha network is active. It's blinking because it's taking data back and forth over this coaxial cable uh, to the device that is on the other end of your home. Uh, and you can see here the coax light is lit up green on this device also to let us know that uh, things are working. So again, we're transferring data, bridging between these two devices, and it'll eventually go back and forth out to the internet uh, through the router that this device is connected to. So the only thing you have to plug this into initially is your cable television wiring. We've got it now connected to my MacBook here via wireless AC, uh, but you can again also plug in two more devices in the back here with a hardwired ethernet jack if you wish. So now what we're gonna do is have the Mac do a quick uh, speed test of this wireless network. Now remember, we are just like right next to each other. So this is the ideal scenario, but this is how I usually test the uh, maximum bandwidth that a wireless access point might be able to achieve for us. And as you can see here, we're getting uh, just about half a gigabit over the air here, about 497, 460 megabits per second. Uh, this is very much on par with what I've seen uh, other wireless AC access points do with this computer at this proximity. You you see those data rates drop off the further you get away as the signal gets weaker, but uh, this really does seem to me to be performing uh, the same that I've seen uh, other access points perform that uh, are running over traditional ethernet. Now the next thing I want to do is just do a quick ping test. So we'll go ahead and ping that same computer we were just connecting to on my network. And you can see we're getting a, uh, a response rate here of about six to seven milliseconds. And that's about three milliseconds slower uh, than what I would get just off of my regular access point that's just connected to ethernet without having to do all this uh, coax translation in between. So there is a slight bit of latency. We saw that in the last review with these devices that uh, gets introduced on a Mocha network. It should not be noticeable to really anybody, but if you've got a really hardcore gamer that's always focused on their ping times to the servers they're connecting to, uh, there is just a slight bit of latency these, these deliver to your network, but really nothing to be concerned about, and it really won't be anything noticeable by just about anyone unless they uh, really look for that kind of thing. Now, unlike the little Mocha adapters that we looked at two weeks ago, this one has a pretty robust control panel. The problem is it's very difficult to find it on your network. So what I'm going to be doing is uploading a video to my secondary channel as to how you can find the address for this so you can go in and configure some of these things because uh, there is one setting I'm going to show you that you definitely want to disable uh, that at the moment is enabled by default. And I'm hoping they disable this option or at least uh, turn this thing off by default in future versions of their firmware. So I'm going to log in real quick and show you where that is and then I'll show you some of the other stuff uh, that you can configure on here too. Uh, so by default, the uh, username and password is admin and admin. You can change that. We go over here to advanced setup. I want you to go over to local SSH. And uh, what this is is a uh, shell interface to the uh, computer that is running inside of this device. So although this is you know, essentially a router that, or a wireless access point that just transits data between these Mocha adapters, it's actually capable of doing more than just that. It's a full Linux computer, as most of these little devices are these days. And uh, this shell lets you log in and do stuff to it. So if I uh, just go over here to my terminal screen and log in as root uh, with the password Password, unfortunately, of admin. I am in this device as a uh, almost a godlike user that can do anything. So I can install some pretty malicious stuff on this device right now if I wanted to. And by default, it is very insecure in the sense that anyone on your network who finds this thing uh, could log in and do some nasty stuff. Now they have to be on your network in the first place, but uh, with Mocha adapters, sometimes it's not all that hard to do because if you don't have that filter I talked about in the last video set up, uh, it could maybe bleed out into the neighborhood a little bit. So I think this is something they definitely want to uh, turn off as soon as possible and until they do uh, you'll want to disable this because right now I am logged into uh, this device with that shell thing and I could install my own software and do a whole bunch of stuff and in fact there's a good amount of memory left over here for me to play around with too so this is a, a pretty scary thing to have accessible just by default again it's not accessible to the outside so you don't have to worry about uh, somebody stumbling across it on the internet but if somebody is already in your network or you have people coming and going that you don't know uh, they could be able to access this and uh, 
uh, install some things you don't want in your network. Now I'm hoping a future firmware update will set this to disable by default, but at the moment it's on enable and you should definitely turn it off. I also wanted to just show you the wireless setup real quick because this could be kind of daunting as well. Uh, so I mentioned at the outset that this has uh, some pretty modern wireless technology built in. We've got uh, four different values here for the five gigahertz radio. If you just want to change the wireless passwords, uh, go over to basic setup here and what you want to do uh, is select the top level for each frequency. So remember this has a 2.4 gigahertz radio for older devices and a five gigahertz radio for newer ones. And uh, all you need to do is find the first one on the list for each. So you can see here that uh, this one here for the 2.4 gigahertz is the one you want to select first. You can go ahead here and change the network name and the password. And then if you want to do the same for the five gigahertz radio, uh, select that, uh, change the password and the network name and you're good to go. And if you don't want to bother with passwords at all, like hooking up printers and stuff, you can use the WPS button here at the top. Uh, most devices these days should support that. So that is the Action Tech WCB6200Q. This is the wireless extension component of their Mocha product line and it works really, really well. So for around $200, give or take, uh, you will have yourself a, a very quick and easy network extension that is, in my testing, as reliable as Ethernet is. It really works exceptionally well, very fast, very reliable, and really solves a problem very quickly if you don't want to have to run wiring throughout your home or pay somebody to do it. Uh, pretty much a turnkey solution. Uh, just remember, this does not work with satellite television wiring. It only works with cable TV wiring. So if you have satellite TV service in the house, this will not work with it, uh, but cable TV wiring should work fine. In my experience, it's been very easy. A lot of folks have been writing in since I did the last review about how awesome this stuff has been for them. So I think you'll have a pretty good and smooth experience with it, but uh, you can always go out to Action Tech Support or uh, go on to like DSL Reports forums and other uh, websites to get some help from people that are using these things all the time and are very passionate about them too. So that will do it for the Action Tech. Be sure to take that SSH thing and turn it off when you buy this, but uh, otherwise it's something I can definitely recommend. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.